you mind if I ask you a quick question? Yeah, I'm going to set you up. Come on through. Hello. High five. Give knuckles. High five. Knuckles. All right. <laughs> what is it about the sport that just makes you want to participate in it? Rally is a driver sport. I mean, it's, it's all through the woods. It's, it's a little bit difficult to spectate, but if you're a driver and you're passionate about sliding a car, jumping a car, just hitting stuff that you have no idea what's on the other side, and have a teammate that's basically trusting you with his life and you're trusting him with, or her with your life, and just, just going for it. Small crest, left four long, right three long. Off camber, slippy. 50. Left three very long into a right four minus. Fifty. Right four minus opens tightens to a four into a caution into a turn right two. Oh, we broke something, I think. Turn right two, left five minus, opens, pass road, into a left six plus, right four. You got a flat. <laughs> left four, right four very long. Which oh, one's flat? Wrong left. How much mile we Right five minus, six miles. Right five minus. Right four, left four, very long. Right four. Let's go right four long, 30. Just remember you. Uh, my name is John, I'm 41 years old and I am the Flatirons Tuning Performance Technician. I repair rally cars, I uh, travel all over the country with the rally team and take care of everything. I worked at Flatirons for many, many years, going on a decade. At the beginning of the season in 2006, the technician that was managing the rally team uh, quit and there was an opening. Scott Crouch called me and asked me if I'd like to just tag along. My name is Scott Crouch, I'm 45 years old and I'm a partner in a Subaru and Acura store in Boulder, Colorado. Flatirons Rally started um, back in the winter of 03 and it was with a, actually an old employee of mine that is still involved in rally named Tanner Faust. He and I went skiing in Steamboat where he was actually working at the Bridgestone Ice Driving School and on a lift ride up uh, the day we were skiing he threw out that he'd love to get involved in rally, would I be interested? And, Two days later, he called me and said he'd found a rally car and let's go buy it. And we bought it and three months later, we, we raced our first rally at Steamboat. So how was it out there? Hot, slippery, dusty. Um, no, it, it's a rally, all right. <laughs> uh, I'm Stéphane Verdier, I'm 37 years old. I'm from France. I'm a professional driver. We are in uh, Oregon, uh, right next to Portland in Hillsboro. That's the round four of the national championship for rally, which also is the what there's two more rally after this one for qualifying for the X game. And the X game is kind of right now the Super Bowl for rally. For us, it's kind of hard to get in because we have um, a production class car. And the way the qualifying works, they take the top 10 car overall, and that's who's going to move to the to the X game. But if you don't have an open class car like we don't, it's kind of we have to really push hard and always finish in top 10. Uh, to be able to make that, that uh, those games. Friday was the first day of the rally, which, which was a, a four special stages out at Portland International Raceway. It's more set up for the fan than more than anything else. We can win the but we can definitely lose it. So we just try to be as fast as we can without taking too many risks. It'd be a big mistake to, to make a mistake on those stages, but...
start of the stage is always, I think, one of the coolest things, uh, especially the way we're doing it in, uh, in Oregon. Friday night in Portland, um, one of the stages actually started on the uh, one of the back straights. We get to the line and they start giving say, okay, you have one minute to start, uh, so 30 seconds, whatever. And when you get to 50 seconds, I always do the same thing. Uh, 50 seconds, I put the first in, the car in first gear and I do it twice to make sure the car is in gear. Uh, and I just release the clutch when the car is in just a tiny bit to make sure the gearbox is, is locked in. Then I wait and, uh, and, that, and at that time, that allows me to focus 100% on the car and pretty much eliminate everything around me. The only person I, I, I pay attention to is Scott. So I listen to his breathing and listen to what he's doing and listen to, and listen to the car. But anything else around me, I don't see it anymore. I just see where I have to go. You know, butterflies going and you're, you're re-tightening your belts and you're, you're watching the clock and they're doing the countdown. And in your mind, you're thinking about what corners are coming up before you. And when you get to five seconds, that's when I start raving the engine. And I rave at 5,000, I stay at 5,000 at five seconds. And Scott goes at the same time in my mic, uh, because we have an intercom between the two guys. He starts counting down five, four, three, two, and one. We had a great Friday evening and actually put some time on our closest PGT competitors. We finished, uh, I think after the eight miles, we were like nine seconds ahead of our second place PGT, which was perfect for me. It just showed me that I have a little bit more speed than them. And so for Saturday, it will set me up with a little bit more relaxed. Second day, we set up service in Vernonia. Sometimes, uh, at a particular rally, you'll move two or three times in one day. Um, and it's really a blessing when you can set up on a Saturday morning and pick up on a Sunday afternoon. And Saturday, uh, went out first first stage and, and flatted within the first mile of a 10 mile stage. Everything started with me blowing up a tire. We punctured like a mile into the nine mile stage and ran it on the rim and then changed it after the stage, but it's hard to run a full stage on a rim. So I was really pissed off because I had the flat tire. I knew I lost a lot of time. We pulled out of the stage and decided to change the tire. We couldn't open the trunk. So I'm like, and I thought we had a second stage right after that. So I had to change the tire, we don't have a lot of time, and I can't open up the trunk. So I had to climb through the car, inside the cage, to pull the tire. Hopefully I was able to get the tire out of the back of the car with the jack and everything through the car. So I was so pissed that I couldn't open that trunk. And we had problem in the morning, we couldn't close the trunk. So we finally were able in the morning to close the trunk, but now we couldn't open it. So I was like, I was livid. Then we put the, the jack on the car, use the impact wrench, and the impact wrench ran out of battery. Never happened before. It was just the impact wrench shot up out of battery. And the way the jack was made, we couldn't use the jack to jack up the car without the, the, the impact wrench. So we had to stop all the competitor, ask them for one of the impact wrench. So we stole an impact wrench from one of the guy. Then the car after that, we stole their jack to change our tire. But I got to the service, I was furious. Getting out of the car, pissed off, screaming at everybody because the car is not the way it's supposed to be. But forgetting that I'm the one who made the first mistake by blowing up the tire. The first pit of the day here was, in my opinion, the worst pit I've ever been a part of. Uh, multiple errors on every member of this team, um, and it was just a complete disaster. Things uh, happened out of the blue in combination with things that we might have expected to see. What? You lost the rear axle, too. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. Yeah, this is how bad. Oh, what the f so we ended up making a wrong tire choice. We ran the soft tires. Uh, we lost the front tire. It took out our fender and our fender liner. Our trunk was stuck shut. Our impact battery was dead on the 
on the gun we use inside the car to do quick expedited tire changes uh, when we run into situations on stages where we get a flat. In this heat, under these dry conditions, with the roads being choppy, um, we've been pretty much destroyed in three stages soft tires. We had one catastrophic failure. The other one is just, there's nothing left of it. I haven't ever really seen quite a worn out rally tire as that. So anyways, with all the failures we had in the first, first pit, it culminated with the car being dropped and backing out of here. At that point, I noticed a puddle under the left front area. When we elevated the front of the car, this kind of substance kind of bled off onto the tarp off the skid plate. Um, I thought that perhaps it was from the water crossing this morning. I didn't really have a time to address it dealing with the fender and the, and the wiring harness and everything else that went wrong. So I sent them out and just kept my fingers crossed. After they left, I walked over to the puddle and noticed that it was actually odorless and pretty watery and black. What it was was completely liquefied CV grease. This is, a, this is some sort of concoction. Right here I have some suntan lotion mixed with a little bit of uh, Oregon mud and dust mixed with a little bit of CV grease um, mixed on top of a sunburn. And I knew at that point that we had a bad front CV joint, um, which doesn't surprise me. Those guys are so cool because they take s from us all day long. You have to have a good relationship with those guys because they know what's going on, they understand the deal then, okay, Steph, is, uh, Steph has to have the perfect car to, to win. And so he's pissed off at me, but he's not pissed off at me. He's just pissed off at the situation for now. And uh, and you can't be pissed off at them because something broke. I mean, most of the time, if something broke is because you made a mistake to break it as the driver. So and it, it goes around. I mean, if, he, if they make a mistake, I mean, I make a lot of mistakes too driving it. So I can when I make mistakes, they they pissed at me, but they pissed at me like for 10 minutes, and after everything calm down and we back together. And uh, with John, I mean, with John, we, we butt head here and there, but we respect each other. I respect what he says and he respect what I say. Um, sometimes, and I don't want Stefan to watch this, but sometimes when I find something wrong with the car and it's during a short pit stop or a ser short service, um, I won't tell him about it and I will... I will basically, like a gambler going to Vegas and trying to play the odds, run it through my head as far as what the chances of that particular problem failing are. The next run, uh, we do a good, we maintain a pretty good speed for a pretty fast speed for the next two stages. We should be in good, uh, in good shape. We gave up about a minute, um, lost first place, and Stefan came out next three stages and just tore it up and pretty much regained the time that we had lost. We've got the car dialed in. We just knocked out one of the best services ever. So in contrast, we went from worst to best in about three hours. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I think the car's dialed in. I don't foresee any more issues. Everything looks good. Um, it's really rough out there. We're at war against this, this climate and this environment right now. Um, and also against Stefan as he takes the car out there and pushes it to the brink of braking and holds it there. Um, on some incredibly tough roads.
press into a right three plus over small crest. 30, right four minus. Right five tightens to a three. Is he all right? Yeah. You tried to kill me. No, I was. <laughs> I read the note right. Seven just fixated on Alex, and then he fixated on you and forgot the turn. Hey! <laughs> why, why are you trying to kill me? We had a close call in one of the early stages um, where Ken Block had come, gone off the road, and and uh, we came close to hitting him. Well, I don't know what was he on the road like sixth or seventh at that time. So a bunch of other cars had gone by, and Alex was telling everyone to slow down because we didn't want someone to come around and do what we did, hit our car, you know? And when it happened in rally, normally the co-driver or the driver goes before the car, where the car went off, give us a triangles and a sign saying, it's okay, so don't stop for me, I'm, we're fine, just keep going. Maybe you're right for the Titan, and Ken Block's co-driver, Alex, was kind of at the beginning of the turn with the triangle out, and they've always, had obviously gone off the road, and um, Alex had his okay sign out, and, and we kind of fixated on Alex. And So Alex was up slowing him down, so I went and got the phone to call the team, tell them everything was okay. And so I called, and so I was like, oh, I, I should text my wife, so, because she was at the end of the stage spectating, you know? So it's kind of frightening when everyone comes through and we don't. So I was texting her. And the corner tightened pretty quickly. And Stefan, I think, kind of fixated on Alex as well as me and, and uh, overcooked the turn. And, and we kind of slid off the turn, just like obviously Ken had done, because it was kind of a tricky corner. And, and Ken was standing by his car, which was off the, off the corner right at the apex. And I guess he was texting um, on his phone. I was just, I was texting my, I was texting my wife and I looked up and I'm like, oh my God. And came too fast in the corner, they went off, and it was a corner was tying. So I thought we, I saw that we were not going to make the corner, so I threw the car sideways, tried to slow it down. And as I was sliding, going outside the, the turn, I see Ken's car, which like just the nose picking up, and Ken, the driver, is next to his car texting on his phone. And I look up, and like they're just sliding sideways, and all of a sudden he's locked up the brakes, so they're just. You know, once you lock the brakes up, the car just goes whatever direction it's going. That's it, you know? And he see me coming and he see my car is sideways going off with all four wheel lock. And he's kind of frozen. He froze like for a split of second. Say, okay, which direction am I going to jump to avoid the car? So he's just sliding directly at me. And I didn't know what to do because if he'd actually got back on the gas, he might have gone that way. And if he'd stayed on the brakes, he would have gone that way. So I tripped over myself and fell down on the bank. You know, the bank's only like, you know, this high compared to the road, you know? And so he tried to back up and he fell in the grass because like he was like kind of a, on a ditch. So he kind of fell, you know, he was working on, on trees or whatever, he kind of fell back and I saw him falling down. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna hit him. I thought we hit Ken because he kind of backed up as he was trying to to uh, get away from us and slipped on, on probably some soggy logs and fell over and I couldn't see him. And uh, I, my reaction was, Stefan, did we hit him? And Stefan said, no, we're okay. And we took off. And he just came up and literally stopped two feet away from me. And I was just sitting on the ground. He stopped two feet away from me and just, I think he looked down and saw I was okay. Just put it in gear and took off. But. And we slid it, slid it, and he was like sitting down looking at me and hopeless because he did nothing he could have done. And the car stopped maybe like six inches from him. And so Scott freaked out because he couldn't see Ken because Ken was on the ground. I could see him. And I saw him when we stopped, and when we stopped, Ken was sitting in that position and just passed out. I mean, didn't pass out, but just laid down on the grass. Said, oh my gosh, I almost died. And uh, the other thing is Ken's leg, I couldn't see Ken's leg, so I thought Ken's leg was on front of my wheel, so I couldn't get back on power. I had to wait for him to move his leg so I could get back on power to go, to go over, around him. Yeah, I mean, it was that close to where, I mean, my legs could have been under the car or, or whatever, you know? And I, granted, I shouldn't have been there, but I thought, you know, okay, it's a dangerous corner, but Alex is at the entrance of the corner with the caution, you know, with the, the caution sign out and the book saying okay and telling people to slow down. Uh, apparently that all meant nothing to Stefan. <laughs> uh, I apologize, it was my fault, I should have slowed down more. 
I don't think I'm gonna get a, a pair of DC shoes for Christmas. <laughs> Very surreal. I mean, I, all I can see was Ken blocking right in front of my vision with these quarter-sized eyeballs. Like, hey, I'm just, I'm gonna get run over by a rally car. Can you see my eyes? So it was definitely my fault. I apologize. And uh, but he was cool about it. We laughed about it. It all worked out okay. So. I didn't know, you know what I mean, when a car's got its yeah. brakes locked up, you yeah. don't know which way, because exactly. you could have let off and made it, yeah. Yeah. so I wouldn't want to go that way, and, but then you stayed on the brakes, so if I'd gone that way, yeah. so I was just, uh, I chipped over myself. It doesn't apply to the last stage, it only applies to the last stage, I believe, so. Uh, this afternoon, after you go through refueling for the final time, Please get over there and get your jugs and your barrels at as soon as possible, okay? We need to clean that area up and shut it down quickly this afternoon, okay? 215. Here. 42. Here. 40. Here. 438. 232. Here. 538. Here. 591. You guys here? Okay. Find out? Okay. Uh, 31. Here. 692. Here. 649. Here. 401. Garth McPhee. They are not going to Okay. Uh, one more thing before you guys go. Uh, Lou, back here. Yep. Where? Uh, Steve Greer, are you here? Where? What'd you do? What'd you do? <laughs> Yesterday was Steve's birthday, today's Lou's birthday. Let's sing a happy birthday, right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I don't know if you need Steve. that dropped out of Max Attack. We're gonna have a $5 challenge. So far, I've got three two-wheel drive cars that are gonna restart. So, see me in a second, and we'll start our Sunday pool. Thank you. Any other questions? Be safe out there today, everybody. Thank you very much. We'll see you here. But uh, so coming out of the second day, we had a pretty good lead. Not a good lead, but we had 17 seconds on the second place. The the second place was uh, Peter with that new WRX uh, 06 with more power than us and everything. And it was getting really fast by the end of Saturday. So when we came to Sunday. The first stage was a 10 mile stage and there was a brand new stage for all of us. But the first section of the stage, like maybe half of the stage was uphill. So I knew I had to push pretty hard going at that uphill because Peter had been having more power than us was, and being a really good driver was gonna catch up with us. And first stage on Sunday, we had a long break due to some problems with the uh, uh, O control car, which is the car that goes out first. And one of those car crash. So we had to wait like almost a couple of hours we actually had to kind of hang out at the start of the stage to uh, to to go. So we were like, I was in the mind game. I mean, my my mind was set to go race, and for two hours we had to relax. Mentally, you kind of get you lose focus and you kind of get out of the the game plan. And and it was a really slippery uh, stage, a lot of rocks on the on the corners. Um, and the way the the roads are in Oregon, it's crowded because they use uh, trucks to log the. Um, trees and everything so it makes the road really uh, crowned and for irrigation system purpose too so the water can goes off so the, there's not a flat surface so when you get in a corner the road is completely uh, uh, crowded so you want to be on the inside of the corner so you can use that bank but if you leave it off you slide off and that's where you get in trouble and that's where all the marble is also it's on the outside of the corner probably two miles into the stage so we went two miles into the stage we had a, a right three and it's okay the right three like 150 I think it was right three so there was heavily crowned and very loose gravel. I started to go on the outside to set up for the right turn, and by going outside, I went into marble and never was able to set the car up on the inside. Came into it probably a little faster than we should have. Too fast, and the car slid off the crown, and we went off. And unfortunately, went off into an area that was pretty um, pretty deep. Into the ditch, and pretty much rolled upside down into the ditch. Car rolled. Right five minus 120. 
turn right three on crest, opens long over small crest. Fuck, Scott, Step. I'm sorry. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. devastating. I mean, I mean, I'm still not over it. It's going to take me a lot of time to get over it. What happened? Yeah. Just uh, it up. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, I need to find a different sport. <laughs> um, no, it's bad. It's, uh, it's really bad. Uh, not only gaming, I mean, not finishing the rally is bad, but destroying the car is even worse. So it's a mistake that I didn't need to make. I don't think there's a mistake you need to make, but um, bad, bad day. Everything's in the air when we were pretty set to have a great season. And uh, one mistake, pretty much throw everything away. to be put in the car again. There's not a lot of time for the next rally. Is it worth it to invest that much money just to, to have fun? <laughs> the perfect opportunity for us to score points for the next game. We were fifth overall at the time. We were leading our class. So it would be good for the championship in a, in a production class. It was good for the DX game and everything got destroyed like in, in a split of a second. Oh no, that's the only person to blame, it's me now. Because I'm the one who was driving the car, I'm the one who put it on the roof there, it's nobody else. <laughs> It's, it's the way it is, um, but that's the way it is, that's why racing is, and uh, maybe maybe it'll be better better thing later. I think rally fans are, are truly passionate about cars. They love cars. They love racing. Um, they just want to see. Uh, you know, true driving, and they want to see people that are making mistakes. Because you know, you can pick a corner, and every driver is going to do it differently. They've never seen this corner before, and I, I think it's there, there's something about that that you know, kind of. I mean, I, before I started racing, I was went to a lot of rallies and just just went to watch and try to pick the corner that's you know the tightest or has a pond or something on the outside. And you, know, you help flip the people back over when they when they crash the cars and they keep on going. It's uh, that's something you can't do in most sports. Carry on. I love motorsports and I've ridden dirt bikes since I was 13. You know, I guess with age comes a cage. I've hurt myself so many times on my dirt bike, but uh, I love having a, a motorsport where we race and I'm, I'm very safe. Rally really for me 
uh, it's just the thing that I love. I would say probably I'm a little ADD and, and these, these events, rally just first one I did I mean it, you're so focused and you're on the clock from the day you show up till the d day you leave you're, you're on the clock and everything is scheduled every, everything is very regimented and, and it's, it's very focusing and it's very for me it's 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 a great distraction I mean I, I work a lot and it's stressful and I come to these rallies and they're it's a different kind of stress but it's a, a ra relaxing kind of stress and it's just intense and I, I love I love the intensity you know, rally is truly a driver sport. And uh, I definitely see rally making huge progress, especially with X Games. Um, the alternative sports, all the youth that's coming up right now that's seeing rally is, you know, as an action sport, it is really pumped on it. And, you know, you see a couple more years, I bet there's going to be a lot more people getting involved and uh, starting to race. Oh, it's just a lot of fun. It's a rush. And, I mean, being able to drive on the edge this whole time and, and hopefully not crashing is, that's why I like to do it. I know a lot of people ask is when they come to a rally for the first time, I said, well, why do you guys do this? You are stressing out, there's a lot of running around, screaming, you're pushing yourself like this, this weekend is going to be super hard. Why are you going to put yourself in such a situation? What do you enjoy about it? For me, rally is the purest thing. They give you a road and you have to go as fast as you can, go get all the people. So that's what I enjoy. Yeah, this, and this, that's the cool thing about rally, you can never predict what's going to happen. You can, you can show up in rally 100% prepared, but there's always something who's gonna jump at you. And that's the, the way to, okay, how do I compensate for what jumped at me? How do I make it, fix it and recover from it and make it better so I can not happen again? And whatever time I lost, how can I gain that, that time back? So it's a, it's a fight against the competitor, but it's also a fight against you. You have to be really focused. You have to be 100% of knowing what you're doing. It's a big game of, I mean, of, of speed, of, of concentration, of stress, and it, and it only happened in like in two days. So everything is super uh, concentrated. So it, it's like you have three days, it, it, your world goes upside down for three days, and after that, it's all calm, calm. So that's what I like about it, is, it, is the, just the, the fighting of everything, all those things being thrown at you, and you have to get kind of dodged it. Okay, how am I gonna go around this thing? I would like to just take a moment now and thank everybody. Those people are, uh, of course, Scott and Stefan, um, Noah, um, John Cooley back at Flatiron Tuning in Boulder, Brian Scalia, um, the great guy behind this documentary. And, and this isn't possible without all of these people uh, putting their piece of the puzzle into it to complete the whole picture. Um, it's a team effort.